I'm about to do your Capricorn August and September 2020 love reading and in this reading we're going to take a look at the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. Capricorn, how is it going? Come on in, have a seat. My name is Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Capricorn love reading video. If this is your first time here and you have questions that you want answered about your romantic love life or your relationship, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you never miss any of the Capricorn love readings I post for you every week. Now let's get on with today's Capricorn reading because today we're going to take a look at the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. So whoever this is that you're romantically involved with, romantically interested in, romantically connected with, even if it's just energetically, we're going to take a look at the connection between the two of you. First, we're going to get one card for the mutual point of interest between the two of you. Then I'm going to pull three cards for you, Capricorn, three cards for your person. Then I'm going to clarify everything with the second deck to see if we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on in this love connection you have. And we're going to do this for the last week of August, first week of September 2020. Now, just keep in mind that this is a general reading, and it's not even possible for it to resonate with literally every single Capricorn on the entire planet all at the same time. So regardless of how this reading resonates for you, you still probably want to check your Moon, Rising, and Venus sign videos, because they can give you more clarity and more insight about what's really going on in your particular situation, and you can find the links to those videos in the description box down below. Now, apparently, on the YouTube end of things, when you hit 10,000 subscribers, they turn on this little merchandise shelf under the videos. So, thank you very much for helping me get to 10,000 as quickly as I did. This channel's not even 90 days old yet, and we're already past 15,000 subscribers. But apparently, they've turned on the little merchandise shelf. I have my own merch now, so you can check that out below the video. But enough yakking about that stuff. Let's get on with this Capricorn reading for today. And let's get one card for the mutual point of interest between Capricorn and their romantic person of interest for this last week of August 2020, first week of September 2020. What is the mutual point of interest between Capricorn and their romantic person of interest? What's going on with my Capricorn people here in love? Oh, there it goes, shooting out on the floor. Now let's get three cards for you, Capricorn. What's going on with Capricorn as it relates to their romantic person of interest and the connection between them for this last week of August, first week of September 2020. Let's get one more card for Capricorn, please. Oh, okay, well, looks like we're taking some bonus cards, Capricorn. We got two more flip over in the deck here. Let's see what we have. Okay, looking cool. Now let's get three cards for your person, Capricorn. What's going on with Capricorn's romantic love interest as it relates to Capricorn and their connection for this last week of August 2020, <clears throat> first week of September 2020? Time is flying. It's going to be Christmas before I realize it, I think. Let's see. And one more card for Capricorn's romantic person. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the bottom of the deck, the overall energy of this reading is the Four of Cups. So this represents either a love offer is on the table currently, and it's just not been accepted or rejected. It's kind of left hanging here in the air. Or this is one of you two is wanting to make a love offer, but you're afraid to do it because you're afraid the other person might reject you. So that's the overall energy of the reading. Now, for the mutual point of interest, this is something that's going on between the two of you. Both of you are thinking, feeling, or acting this way for some reason, and the mutual point of interest between you is temperance. So temperance is Sagittarius energy. This is an energy of being very patient with something, blending things together little bits at a time, taking a step back, seeing how is all this playing out, how is this working before coming back in and making some adjustments. So this is like trial and error. This is like fine tuning type adjustments, not being in any big hurry, being very patient about something. So let's clarify temperance for the mutual point of interest between Capricorn and their romantic person of interest. Why is temperance here, please? Tell me more about this temperance card, please. Okay. 
think there's a lot to talk about Capricorn. Look at how all the cards are trying to get away from me. I, I typically get three cards for your energy and three cards for your person. I got five cards for you. So it's, it's feeling like there's a lot going on here. Let's get three cards to clarify this temperance energy. Okay, let's get one more, please. Okay, looks like we're taking two more. There's a lot going on here, I feel. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Nine of Pentacles. So this is the singles card. This is with you, without you, in spite of you. I am single. I'm prosperous. I'm abundant in my own right. This is having your material worlds in order, both of you. This is both of you being totally okay, self-sufficient, not needing anyone to take care of you, having your, your 3D realm, your finances, your material world in order, individually. But still needing to be patient for some reason here. Now to clarify this temperance card, we have the Five of Pentacles, the High Priestess, the Two of Swords, and we have the Fool. So this Five of Pentacles is abandonment. This is someone being left out in the cold, someone being in like a poverty sense, someone being in like a feeling like they're not good enough. This could be like a scarcity mentality, a lack mentality, but usually this is someone being left out in the cold here. But this is energy for both of you. And we've also got the High Priestess, and this is she who knows. This is the intuition. This is you guys both being in touch with your intuition, getting divine guidance, receiving messages from the divine, from the universe. You might be seeing synchronicities. You might be having dreams. You might just be getting feelings about some intuitive knowing. This is gut feelings about something, your intuition. And we have this Two of Swords. This is a decision needing to be made, only it's not being made, either because you guys don't have all the information you need to make the decision, you don't have all the facts, or because there's something that you don't know about yet, something that you're refusing to look at. So, <clears throat> I feel like whatever this decision is, you're getting divine guidance here. You're getting your intuition, your gut feelings are speaking to you. And it looks like it's a decision about leaving someone out in the cold, becoming single, and taking a leap of faith. So this fool card is not needing to know what all the steps are before you take the first step. It's not needing to know what the outcome is going to be before you take the first step. It's about having that, that blind faith that just lets you go for it. Just take the leap off the cliff and figure out how to grow your wings on the way down. Hmm. Now, in your energy, Capricorn, you're showing up as the devil, which is your energy to begin with. You've also got the Ace of Cups, the Lovers, the Three of Pentacles, and the Ten of Pentacles. So this devil card, this is usually a heavy energy. This is usually something like addiction or obsession or compulsion. Sometimes, because these people right here that are chained to the devil, they're actually the same people from the lover's card here. So sometimes this represents a soul contract. You know, this, these are divine counterparts, like a divine connection. But here they're chained up to the devil. So this means that it's like a soul contract. This can represent there being a very strong sexual attraction, a very strong pull between you and another person. Well, you and the person that's showing up in the reading with you. And this this could be like a situation where you feel like you can't escape their pull. So let's clarify this devil card for Capricorn. Why is the devil here in Capricorn's energy, please? Why is the devil here for Capricorn? Oh, that one, okay. And we got all, all these cards are like trying to get away from me here. It feels like you have a lot going on. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what I'm laughing about in just a second. Let's get one more for this devil card. Okay, thank you. On the bottom of the deck, we have the four of wands. So this fours are about stability. Think of a table that's got four legs to be stable. Well, this is stability of the home life, stability of the family life, stability of the connection between you. This can represent enough stability there that it's worth celebrating. These four wands that are holding up this little canopy represent 1111, which is the soulmate twin flame number. Really, it's the twin flame number. 
So there's some sort of I, some sort of devil energy around your home life, your your family life, the stability of the connection between you. We've got that nine of pentacles right under that again. Again, this is the singles card with or without you. I'm single, prosperous, abundant in my own right. This is what I was laughing about. I'm asking to clarify this devil card. And the very first card I get to clarify it is the devil again. So this is just further confirmation that there's some sort of heavy energy involved here. Some sort of devil energy. This can be addiction. This can be obsession. Maybe this is telling me you're obsessed with your person. Maybe they left you out in the cold. Maybe there's some sort of devil energy that is interfering in the stability of your home life. Maybe it's even caused you to become single here. But also to clarify the devil, we have the Eight of Swords and the Eight of Cups. So this Eight of Swords represents that you're stuck in your head about something. You're thinking about something over and over again on like a, a repeating loop in your mind. This is a self-imposed mental prison of your own thoughts. This is you not being sure what the safe step to take is, so you're thinking about it over and over and over again, feeling stuck, trapped, and blocked because you don't know what the safe move is. <clears throat> Regarding this devil energy, but it looks like you're walking away from it. This Eight of Cups is detachment. This is either emotional detachment or physical detachment, like physically walking away from something. I don't know if you're trying to physically walk away from something, but you feel stuck, trapped, and blocked. You feel like you can't escape it. Maybe you're having a hard time figuring out how to walk away from this devil energy, but it's definitely devil energy. It's showed up here twice. Now, also in your energy, Capricorn, you have the Ace of Cups. This is a new beginning in love and emotions. So let's clarify this Ace of Cups for Capricorn, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's Get one more for this Ace of Cups for Capricorn, please. Okay. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Seven of Swords. So this can represent many different things. This can represent trying to get away with something, as in lying, cheating, stealing, sneaking around behind somebody's back. So this could be telling me that you have been sneaking around behind someone's back and you have started a new beginning in love and emotions. This could be your person has been sneaking around behind your back and they've started a new beginning in love and emotions. That could be what this devil energy is. It could be either way. This is a general reading, so you just got to take it as it resonates. This, this new beginning in love and emotions, this sneaky behavior could be what this, this devil energy is all about. Could be why you're stuck in your head. It could be what you're trying to like walk away from. This can also represent self-preservation. They're like, why is the guy stealing these swords? It, it may not be sneaky behavior. He might be stealing these swords because he doesn't want those used against him. He doesn't want to be hurt by those swords. So he's stealing them as a way to protect himself. So this could be telling me that you're trying to protect yourself around this new beginning in love and emotions. Or this could be leaving something behind. He can only carry five of these seven swords and he's got to leave two swords behind. So maybe this is telling me that you're walking away from some some devil energy, some, some bond that you felt like you couldn't escape from before. You're finally walking away from it. You're, you're leaving it behind, going off and, and starting a new beginning elsewhere. Or this... This new beginning may not actually be a brand new beginning at all. This may signify that you and your person are starting over from square one. As if, as if maybe there was some sort of problem in the past that got between you guys. And that problem is being walked away from. And now you guys are starting over at square one. That's kind of what it looks like. Because to clarify the Ace of Cups, we have the King of Pentacles. We have the Knight of Swords. And we have the Three of Cups. Now, th I'm just going to start here. The Three of Cups is reconciliation energy. This is being reunited and celebrating. So this is like getting back together and starting over at square one. So it could very well be that way for you. And this could be a, a brand new beginning for the very next person watching this video. So again, you just got to take this as it resonates. But also clarifying the Ace of Cups, we have the King of Pentacles. And this is some. this is a masculine energy. This is someone who is very grounded, very stable, very abundant. They're generous, they're kind. 
Uh, they have their finances in order. They have their material world in order. They usually have their act together, like in terms of finances and material possessions. <clears throat> this is someone who's good at business, someone who's good at managing resources. So I don't know if if you're involved with an earth sign, a, a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, or if this is representing how you view your person, or if this is a piece of, of who you are. Maybe you're stable, grounded, and abundant, and you have your act together. And we've also got this Knight of Swords, and this is the fastest moving knight in the deck. This is about rushing forward, taking rapid, decisive action on something, or rushing forward and speaking the truth about something. Regarding this Three of Cups, this reconciliation, this getting back together, being reunited and celebrating. Now next in your energy, Capricorn, you have the Lovers. So this is, I breathe you in, you breathe me in, we're twin flames, we're soulmates, whatever label you want to use with that. We're connected, divine counterparts, divine feminine, divine masculine. This can also represent needing to make some sort of choice. So let's clarify this lovers for Capricorn, please. Why is the lovers in Capricorn's energy? Um, okay, tell me more about the lovers for Capricorn, please. Get two more to clarify the lovers. Thought that one was going to come flying out for a second. Nope. Okay, we're you're getting bonus cards all over the place, Capricorn. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Hanged Man. So this is progress being halted, things being stagnated, no forward movement. The Hanged Man hangs upside down from the Tree of Knowledge, and he's doing that to gain enlightenment on something. He's looking at things from different perspectives, different angles than he normally would look at something, and he's trying to figure out what to do moving forward. <clears throat> okay. I'm not sure exactly what order these came out in. Okay, so now here's where I feel like this temperance card, this mutual point of interest, I feel like where this might be coming into play now. It's like you're, you're trying to be patient with all this. You're trying to figure out what to do, what the safe step to take is in terms of walking away from this devil energy that's showed up here and been clarified by the devil. There's something going on with a new beginning in love and emotions and, and people being reunited. I'm taking it that this is you wanting to rush forward and take decisive action toward reuniting with your person, towards starting over at square one. And we've got the lover's card here. This is like soulmate, twin flame level energy. It can also represent needing to make a choice here. And to clarify the lovers, we have the Wheel of Fortune, the Four of Swords, the Six of Cups, the Three of Swords, and the Star. Now, th this Wheel of Fortune, this is divine timing. Now, these are divine counterparts in this lover's card. Now, we've got divine timing. This is the Wheel of Fate, the Wheel of Destiny. So, this can be a fated event. This could be an, <clears throat> excuse me, an event that is like... You're waiting on the timing to play out. You're waiting on you're waiting on something to happen with your lover. This can represent that what is supposed to happen will happen just in its own divine timing. And we've got the four of swords next, and this is taking a pause, taking a break, taking a rest, doing some internal work, some some contemplation, some thinking about something, trying to figure out what the best move going forward is. This can also just represent that there's there's a pause right now. We saw the hanged man on the bottom. Things are, are stagnated. They're paused. Progress is halted. And this could just represent another facet of that. This is you just taking a break, waiting on the divine timing to play out with your lover. Next, we have the Six of Cups. And this has quite a few meanings. This can be soulmate twin flame level energy. At the very least, this is a very strong emotional connection between two people. This can represent past life connections, or this can represent someone from your past making a comeback. Now, we've already seen you wanting to be reunited with your person, wanting to start over 
at the beginning with them, you're walking away from some devil energy. This could this could be like some kind of toxic karmic relationship that you're walking away from. We've got the the wheel of fortune here as well. So these two things combined can definitely be a you know a about on the karmic hamster wheel, so to speak. But this can represent someone from your past making a comeback like full-fledged in the flesh, like you getting back together with someone you've been with previously. <clears throat> then we've got this Three of Swords. This is heartbreak and sadness from a third-party situation. This doesn't have to be a romantic third party. It can be any other energy that's not you, that's not your person, that's somehow getting in the way, that's caused a problem, that's caused some sort of heartbreak and sadness. This could very well represent a third party scenario. We did see that Seven of Swords that could represent sneaky behavior, lying, cheating, stealing, sneaking around behind someone's back. Sometimes this Three of Cups can also represent a third party scenario because there are three cups of love present on this card. We've got another three out here coming up next in your energy. So this very well could represent that there was some sort of third party thing going on. We've got someone being left out in the cold as the mutual point of interest, some sort of decision needing to be made. The Fool taking a leap here. This could just be that there's heartbreak and sadness because you guys had split up in the past and that's why you're trying to reconcile things. But then next we have the star. This is like divine guidance. This is the universe handing you a gift in your person. This is you viewing your person as the one for you. I mean, we are clarifying the lovers card right now. We've got the lovers and the six of cups right here and the wheel of fortune and the star all right here together so this has got divine all over it this is like this is a very powerful connection I, you guys are probably supposed to be together and you're just waiting on the divine timing of this all to work out this is you having the hope and the, the faith and the belief that this is going to happen this is also a card of wish fulfillment here now next, in your energy, you have the Three of Pentacles, and this is teamwork, collaboration, working together as equals to build something of value, to build something great. Let's clarify this Three of Pentacles for Capricorn, please. Why is this Three of Pentacles here Capricorn? Let's get two more on this Three of Pentacles, please. Okay. Get one more. Why is this Three of Pentacles here? Okay. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Knight of Cups. So knights are action takers. Cups are about love and emotions. So this is taking actions towards love and emotions, toward romance. This is like the, the white knight, the knight in shining armor who rushes in to sweep you off your feet, save the day. This is about coming forward with actions of love. So this could be making love offers. Or this could be telling me that you want to build something together with your person in a, in a loving situation. Yeah, to clarify this Three of Pentacles, we have the Nine of Wands, the Queen of Cups, and we have the Empress. So this Nine of Wands is a card of being walled off and defensive, but it's a card of healing. This guy has been hurt, so he's built this wall around himself as a way to protect himself so he can't be hurt anymore, so he can heal, get his energy right, and move on to the final stage in his journey. And we've got this Queen of Cups. This is a, a very loving energy. This is someone who's very loving, very nurturing, very in touch with their intuition. They have a lot of love and emotions and they want to give those, those emotions and that love to people. So this is either an aspect of you, Capricorn, or this is an aspect of your person and how you view them. Or it, it could be just telling me that you want to build something loving together with them. That's twice. I mean, two court cards from the cups here. We've got the queen and the knight. So this is taking actions toward love. This is giving your love, nurturing someone. And then we have the Empress, and the Empress is the mother of the tarot deck. This is all four queens wrapped into one person. She's perpetually pregnant, so all new things are birthed through the Empress. So this to me represents the birth of something new in terms of working together with your person to build something loving. This, this is you guys doing that. 
And then we have the Ten of Cups, and this is like the pinnacle of the cup suit. This is about happiness and joy and love and emotional contentment together with another person. It's like the happy fairy tale ending card. So let's clarify that Ten of Cups for Capricorn, please. And let's get one more on this Ten of Cups for Capricorn. All right, thank you. On the bottom of the deck, we have strength. So this is a Leo energy. This represents you having the inner strength to do whatever is necessary in this situation. You have the courage to face your fears, the inner strength to get through this. This can also represent that you had some sort of challenging situation that you've been through, which clearly you have with all this devil energy showing up, this eight of swords being stuck in your head, this walking away from something, dealing with like the waiting and the... On, on the divine timing with your love connection here, having to have all this patience, feeling left out in the cold, having a decision to make about taking some sort of leap of faith. It's been a rough spot, and this is you having all the strength to get through that, all the courage to face your fears to do that. This can also represent taming the beast within, as in like trying to maintain your patience, trying to stop yourself from rushing off and, and doing something too hasty. This is you kind of reining yourself in there. Now to clarify this Ten of Cups, we have Judgment, we have that Three of Pentacles again, and we have the Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, now again, the overall energy of the reading is there's a love offer on the table, but it's not being accepted or rejected, it's just been left hanging here in the air. Or, this is saying that you want to make a love offer to your person, but you're afraid that they'll reject you. Or it's saying that they want to make a love offer to you but they're afraid you'll reject them. Right under that, we have the Two of Cups. So this is a love connection, an emotional connection between two people. This is like the minor arcana version of this lover's card that's already in your energy. Now this, to clarify this Ten of Cups, this Judgment card here, this is a card of second chances. This is like a, resurrecting something, calling something back from the dead, bringing it back to life, transformed in a way that it's never going to be the same again. And again, we've got the divine represented in this card with the angel here. Now this three of pentacles is already in your energy. This is teamwork, collaboration, working together as equals to build something. So you're trying to build this ten of cups with your person. You view them as your lover. You want to, you want to get back together with them. Definitely. <laughs> And this is you wanting to resurrect the situation in terms of building something together with them, building this Ten of Cups together with them. And this is the Seven of Pentacles is you taking stock of the relationship, taking stock of the situation, trying to decide if these seven seeds you've planted are going to grow into the Ten of Pentacles that you both really want. Is, is this worth investing in for you? Or is maybe this a situation that won't pan out and it's time to cut your losses and move on? Although I don't see you having any intentions of doing that. I think this is you like anticipating this paying off in the future. Now Capricorn, in your person's energy, they have the Five of Wands, the Six of Wands, and the Two of Swords. And we've already seen that Two of Swords in the mutual point of interest between the two of you. Let me scoot this over so we have a little more room here. Now this five of wands, fives are conflicts. So this wands are about desires and determination and you know, things that you want, that you have a lot of passion and desire for. So this is a conflict in the desires. This is like an internal conflict where your desires, your person's desires, I should say, are pulling them in multiple different directions. So let's clarify this Five of Wands for Capricorn's Romantic Person of Interest, please. Okay. Why is this Five of Wands here for Capricorn's Person, please? Okay, we'll take that one too. Let's get one more for this Five of Wands. All right, thank you. On the bottom of the deck, we have strength. So yeah, your person's going through it too. They're internally conflicted about something, but the good news is they have the strength to make it through that. They have the courage to face their fears in this. 
that they have the ability to make it through this internal struggle, this internal conflict they're going through. To clarify that five of wands, we have the six of wands again, which is the very next card in your energy. We have the two of cups again, second time we've seen that. And we have the 10 of swords here. Well, so your person is internally conflicted. This six of wands represents moving forward in success and victory. This can also be recognition, as in like your person being recognized for something, or your person having something brought to their attention or their awareness, and now they are recognizing something probably about you or about the connection. I think they're conflicted because they want success and victory, and on the opposite side of this equation, you know, they want success and victory, they want this love connection with you. But on the opposite side of that, we've got this Ten of Swords. This is a painful, abrupt ending. This an ending that you didn't see coming or your person didn't see coming. This, this looks to me like the ending that happened between the two of you. And they're internally conflicted about this. They're trying to face their fears about maybe you rejecting them. See, this is them wanting to make a love offer to you. This, they've got the Two of Cups right under that, the Two of Cups here. They're wanting to make a love offer to you, but they're afraid you'll reject it and put, in, put an end to this situation. Now next we've got the Six of Wands, and again, this is success and victory, moving forward in success and victory. Let's clear. Your person wants to take the leap with you, I'm not sure who was left out in the cold. It looks to me like you did the walking away, Capricorn. You left your person out in the cold, but now you're you're changing your mind about this. Something has happened. Maybe this devil energy at the, from the very beginning was your person's devil energy, and it had you stuck in your head trying to figure out how to deal with it, and ultimately you walked away. Maybe this is also that they got success and victory over the devil energy. They walked away. From that energy and now they're moving forward in success let's clarify this six of wands please <clears throat> okay let's get one more on the six of wands that's not one that's a stack let's just do one please on the bottom of the deck we have the knight of pentacles so this is the slowest moving knight in the deck this is methodical energy one foot in front of the other like slow and steady wins the race the knight of pentacles is not in any hurry which again you're this is the mutual point of interest between the two of you this patience this taking things slow that's what your person's doing here now to clarify this six of wands we have the hierophant the Six of Pentacles, and the Eight of Pentacles. So the Hierophant is like divine guidance. Now we've got the Hierophant and the High Priestess on the table. So these are divine counterparts. These are two cards that are supposed to be together, two people that are supposed to be together. The Lovers, their divine counterparts represented again here. It's all over this reading. We've got the, the Six of Cups. This is Soulmate Twin Flame energy. We've seen the Two of Cups twice. Definitely a very powerful connection. It feels like you're being your person is also being divinely guided toward you. This six of pentacles, this is balance. This is generosity, reciprocity, equal give and take. This is a very balanced connection. Or they're trying to move forward in success and make it more balanced. At the very least, because this eight of pentacles is putting in the work on something, putting in the time, the effort, the attention to detail, putting in the work on something, putting in the work on creating this balance, on being victorious with you, or being willing to do that. They just have this Two of Swords in their energy, and again, this is already in the mutual point of interest. This Two of Swords is a decision needing to be made, only it's not being made either because your person doesn't have all the information they need, they don't have all the facts they don't there's something they can't see yet something they don't know about it might have something to do with this love offer that they want to make but they're just afraid to do it let's clarify this two of swords please and let's get two more okay let's get one more to clarify this two of swords Sure, nothing else flipped. That felt like a mini explosion in my hand right there. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Page of Swords. So 
the swords are about thoughts. Sometimes they're about truth. So this pages are about communications. This is like messengers, news and messages. This one's like communication, communication about the truth, like speaking the truth. This can also be an energy of your person trying to keep tabs on you, you know, like checking out your social media pages, scoping out Facebook and Instagram and things like that, driving past your house, asking people about you. This is an energy of like trying to study something, trying to figure something out, or trying to speak the truth. It might be them trying to figure something out because they have a decision to make and they haven't made it yet. Maybe because they haven't figured it out yet, but right under that, we have the Four of Wands again. Again, 1111, soulmate, twin flame level energy. This is about the stability of the home, the stability of the family, stability of the connection between you. There's some sort of decision that they're trying to seek the truth or speak the truth about that connection. To clarify this Two of Swords, we have the King of Wands, the Ace of Wands, and we have the Knight of Pentacles. So this King of Wands is a very bold, passionate, fiery, determined person. This is someone who knows what they want. They go after what they want with determination. They see things through to the end. They don't take no for an answer. This is about your person having a lot of passion and desire for you. Your person wanting you. And ultimately, your person's not going to take no for an answer. Because what they really want is this Ace of Wands with you. This passionate new beginning with you. We've seen the Ace of Wands, we've seen the Ace of Cups on your side, mutual point of interest, your person wanting to offer you a cup of love, you wanting to offer the cup of love, it just not actually being done. There is a strong connection between the two of you guys, and now we've got this new passionate beginning. It's just not happening quickly. This Knight of Pentacles is the slowest knight in the deck. It's slow, methodical, one foot in front of the other. If you think about the story of the tortoise and the hare, this is the tortoise. This is that slow and steady wins the race type of energy. Now, if you still have questions that you want answered about this situation or your relationship, click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Capricorn love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's going on in your situation. And I'll see you in the next video.